Hello everyone. In this video, I will show you how to create a pivot table in the pie chart in Google Sheets. In this data file, I have a list of students along with their gender identification and their scores on a couple of tests. Uh, but this file is quite large. I think I have about 249 students in this file. So just by browsing through the file, it's going to be are to summarize the gender distribution of the sample. So um, pivot tables can help us summarize the data uh, very easily. So I am going to create a pivot table to summarize the gender information and some of the test information for these students. So to do that, I'm just going to select my entire data range, so all of these columns that have data in them and I am going to the insert menu and then select pivot table. Then notice that Google Sheets already established the data range that you want to use because um, we selected it and then it asks whether you want to use a new sheet or create a pivot table on the same sheet that you're working on. I always recommend doing all the summary information in a new sheet. So let's create a new sheet for this. And notice that I have a new tab here. And a table that is empty now, it's just a template for the table that I want to create. So on the right side, I have a window that says Pivot Table Editor. And here I have to specify what kind of information I want to summarize and how do I want to summarize it, what to put on the rows and the columns of the table. So I mentioned before that I want to summarize the gender information. So uh, in the rows, I click on the Add button and then I get a list of the variables in my data set. From these variables, I'm going to select Gender. Notice that I already get a list of all of the different types of gender identifications that are in my data set. So this is the same as using a unique uh, function, right? All of these unique values that show up in the data are listed. This is also a good way of um, um, checking to see if the data are clean because if you type any of these words in a different way, for instance using lowercase versus uh, uppercase, they will be showed uh, twice or multiple times on this list. So if everything is listed only once, then it means that the data are clean. So I get a list of the unique or the different types of gender identifications that um, occur in the data file. Now for each one of these categories I want to determine the number of individuals that um, that endorse this identification. So to do that I go to the values button and click add and then again I'm going to select gender and notice that automatically uh, Google Sheets use the count A function to count all of the individuals who, or the number of times that each one of these gender identifications occurred in the data. Remember that count A functions is used for counting values of different types, both uh, numeric or string uh, variables. So um, just by default, it used the count A uh, in the header of this column uh, just to show what kind of function was used but you can edit this um, and change it and say uh, for instance we can just say n right from the number of individuals included in each category. Now notice that there is a blank category at the very beginning of the table with the number zero. This may occur if you have any missing data, um, but if I'm looking back to my data range, I don't really have any missing data. But what I did was I selected um, the entire range of data all the way down, uh, including all these empty rows that are um, 
uh, at the bottom of the data file. So, and I wanted to do that just in case I'm adding new data because if I add new data, then my table is going to be automatically updated. But when I look at my pivot table, this doesn't look uh, very good. So I just don't want to include the blanks. So to do that, what I can do is include a filter. So go to this filter button and just click add. And then I'm going to select the variable that I am using for um, summarizing the data. And if I click on the drop down arrow here, notice that I am getting all the different types of gender identifications. From here, if you want, you can um, check or uncheck some of these options depending on what you want to include. In my case, I want to include everything, all the different types of gender identification except for the blank spaces, right? And I'm leaving everything in here. If you, for instance, are interested only in seeing males and females, you can just leave these two checked and uncheck everything else. But I want to see all of the different um, types of gender identifications except for the blank fields, so I'm going to click OK. And notice that my blanks disappear from the table. I'm also getting the total number of individuals in the data set. And the nice thing about this is that this is going to be automatically updated as I'm adding more information or changing information in my file. Um, I can also include some other information in my table. Let's see, maybe I have some uh, test score information in this file, so maybe I can include some of the um, test scores or summarize some of the test scores by gender. Um, so to do that, all I have to do is go to the values field and add another variable. And from here, you can select either test one or test two. I've already used gender. Let's select test two. And notice that by default, Google Sheets used a sum of test two by gender, which doesn't make much sense. So let's change the function from here and select an average instead of the sum. So now I have the average test score on test two by gender. Of course, this is going to look a bit cleaner if I am reducing the number of decimals. So I'm going to select this column and then use this button to reduce the number of decimals. And again, I can change the name of this column if I want to by, um, let's just say I want to make it clean and now use uppercase. So average of test two. One other thing that you can do once you have your table is to create a chart. And let's say I want to create a chart that shows the gender distribution of my sample. So I am going to select the information that I want to include. So the number included in each subcategory, except for a total, of course. And I'm going to get to insert and then chart. Notice that um, Google Sheets automatically created a bar chart. Um, typically for um, information that, or when we have subcategories that add up to 100%, a better choice would be a pie chart. So what I can do is go to the chart editor that is open on your right side and change the type of chart that I want to use and I'm going to select a pie chart. Of course there are different types of pie charts that you can choose from but this one is, is very good. It also gives me the percentages so this will do. Okay, if I want to make any additional changes to my pivot table, all I have to do is hover over the table and notice this edit button. So if I click on this button, I am getting the pivot table editor here. Let's demonstrate how to include another filter. 
Right now I simply excluded the blank values using filters, but you can use filters related to other variables, not just the variable that you are classifying. So I'm going to click on the add button and let's say I want to look, create a filter based on test 2. And uh, when, when you create filters, you have different options. You can actually select the values that you want to include, just like we did before, or you can create a condition, filter by condition, or a rule by which um, observations are selected. And right now there is no rule, but um, let's create one. So let's say that we just want to include test scores um, that are above 60. So let's see greater, greater or equal to, and then type the value 60 here, and then click OK. Notice that the numbers in the table have changed, right? I only have 240 individuals now in the data set, so those who had scores, test two scores before 60 were excluded, and my averages have increased a little bit. But uh, it doesn't really make much sense to create this filter. This was just uh, to show how the filters can be used. So I'm going to remove this information. So this is how you can create pivot tables to summarize data and pie charts to summarize data. Uh, these can be very useful as you monitor data and um, you can share them with someone and see changes in real time as you enter and make changes in the data.